Mr. Alex sits, relaxing, playing one of his favorite musical instruments, the drum. Miss Feely walks by and is happy to see Mr. Alex. She takes a seat and joins him. Mr. Alex, how nice to see you today. How things going? up here over in your corner of heaven. Miss Feely, it is good to see you too. I just here sitting, relaxing, reminiscing about all time on earth in our small corner of the world, the Virgin Islands. Those days were not easy. Living during the time of enslavement before our children became free. Do you remember how, how all of us wanted to live on the Keys because life was a little better there? There was more freedom there. A lot of times we managed our own affairs even though we were slaves. Sometimes there wasn't even a white planter on the key with us. Which one of them keys we used to live on again, buddy? We used to live and work on Virgin Gorda, what we used to call it Spanish Town, Anigada, Just Van Dyke, Peter Island, Beef Island, Guana Island, Norman Island, Cooper Island, the Caminos, Ginger Island, Great Thatch, Salt Island, Prickly Pear, Frenchman's Key, Great Tobago, and Buck Island. Everywhere. You will remember? I remember at least seven of those islands had not a free person on them, not a white person on them. It was so much better for we living on them keys, growing cotton, farming our provisions, raising our livestock, fishing, salt raking. You remember the wrecks? It was so much better than working on those horrible sugar plantations on Tartola. That was hard, my son. Very little flat land, steep hillsides. You know what it is to establish a sugar plantation in them there hills? Eh? Yes, I do, Mr. Ellie. And do you remember those awful slave laws that dictated our lives? Death for planning any rebellion or re escape. Death for striking or opposing any white person. Death for the poisoning of any white person or even attempting to poison. Well, sir, that there was their greatest fear, poisoning. We couldn't beat drums, blow horns, have meetings. We had to get tickets to travel off the plantations. Remember when they had to stop us planting and selling cotton ourselves? At least they never took away our provision grounds. That was because them know, Miss Feely, them know that without them provisions that we used to bring to Rotong for the market day, which used to feed all of them, they would go hungry. I never tell you, Miss Feely, but you remember my great aunt, Miss Esther? Well, her house was one of the central locations for them runaways. It's true. Yeah, Miss Esther don't talk about it a lot, but not even up here. Up here, she's still absorbing the strict code of secrecy. You know what? She used to, you know what used to really make me laugh though? No matter how much times them planters write Mother England to pressure Spain to return the runaways from Puerto Rico, it never used to work at all. The Spanish governors would, would just won't agree. All you had to do was become Catholic and you are free. And we just keep running there, building boats together, stealing vessels. Even with all the punishment in them dreadful slave laws. Punishing all the runaways and anybody who helped them. Do you remember the Strumu at Josiah's Bay? When that planter, what your name again? Isaac Pickering had the whole slave gang sold to Trinidad. When he was under investigation, he had tell a lie. He untruth. He pretended like we had to go. We agreed to go. Now why would we have ever wanted to part with our family, our friends, our provision grounds to go to Trinidad to work on sugar plantations and the next thing you know we did. Mr. Ellick, he did send them, you know. After the slave hunters got them from the hills, he lied. And he tell the family and friends to come and say goodbye the Sunday morning. And when they reached, he had already sent them the night before. 
you should, should have heard the screams of the mothers, pregnant wives, children who had come to town to say goodbye. Them had to catch a Methodist ministers quick to console them, to give them comfort. Girlie, that ain't nothing. You remember the men at the time and all the things that happened to me? You remember the separations? You remember Harry and Margaret? They married for years, you know, and had lived together for more than nine years with them children. But he belonged to another owner and was walking out country. When he reached town, his dear wife, whom he loved with great affection, and her children them gone, he went to his house and didn't find them. He managed to see the vessel in the distance transporting them to Grenada. Do you remember how he prayed for death to take it? You remember Brother Sam on Tadman Estate? He fell unconscious on the beach when his wife and children were wrenched out of his hand them and shipped out of the colony. Do you remember the contempt they had for slave marriages? You know something? We had really come into this, we had really come into this place as captured warriors, as slaves, I tell you. There was a white male planter dominated island. The threat and use of violence was to keep things in place. For so much centuries, we watch our children them soul from under you. Can't protect your woman? We had to bow and say, yes, master, no master. We lost our place as father, protector, and provider. That is the one that get me. I still cry even after all these centuries. We were so happy to be free so we could get our families back together again. And do you know it was only because of my ancestor, Diana Nottingham, at the free village of Long Look, who was able to purchase the freedom of her husband, Jeffrey Pickering, who was one of the slaves on the same Isaac Pickering plantations, that they were able to be together and I was even able to be born. If she hadn't have done that, he would have been shipped off with all the rest of them to Trinidad, Trinidad, never to see his beloved back, Diana, again. But I wonder how they are doing, the families. I hope their families are healthy and their children are prospering. Your tears then put me in mind of Margaret and Elsie. Even her is like they never recovered from what happened on the Arthur Hodge plantation. Remember how that madman had suspected Margaret, a cook, and Elsie, a washer, of poisoning his wife and children? He said he would put an end to them. I remember their screams, scalded mouths, and them dead. He had poured boiling water down them throat. Look, let me tell you, majority of his slave them on this plantation perished from his sadistic ways. Miss Perrine, let's check on them from time to time. But I want to know if you remember that one time we had planned to take the island from the whites and rule it ourselves. McDonald was captain of the slave troops. While the men were burning the town, the women were to stay in the country and burn the sugar canes and the plantation works. And if we won that war, Uncle Limerick and Uncle Shelley from the Joe's Hill Estate were to be our great leaders. Even after all this time, I still so hot at the elder one who betrayed the revolution. Oh, and Colin and Cotton from the Bruce Bay estate. They told everything at the slave trials. Forgiveness, Miss Feely. Forgiveness. Remember where you is. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if they'd still remember us at their emancipation festival. You think they remember Uncle Limerick and Uncle Shelley? You think they even remember Miss Perrine? You think they remember the freedom fighters at Josiah's Bay? It was so nice when they decided to remember that precious freedom by having festivities. Then they started the set on the field in our honor. They had parade and festival queen in our honor. We had to work so hard for their freedom or we would have children with those planters just so those children could be free. You remember how Boyce, Jenny, Betsy, Fanny, Fibber, Margaret, and Rachel all had children for the planter, Mr. George Martin? The last time I had counted, Mr. Martin had fathered 19 children with these women. 
Remember how we used to have to foster good relations with the slave masters and mistresses using subservience and submission just so they could grant us manumission? Then turn right around and purchase the freedom of our brothers and sisters whenever we could. All the things we did. Remember that day, 1st August 1834, when we gathered at the church them to hear the Emancipation Proclamation? What a wonderful day. I haven't checked on the chain them in a little while, but I wonder how them doing, how them faring. The last time I checked, they were managing well. Living together, <laughs> living together as one, helping one another build them, house them, living in faith, church was central, extended families living together in villages. They grew all they needed to eat and made all the clothes, basket, hats that they needed. Them fish and farm. I was so proud of them. Such nice people all cheering them grow into. They were doing so well that 20 years after emancipation, they owned the soil. Look at them. We come in as property, a sad time in our history as a people. But they ended up being the owners of production. They own the land. Look at this now, lad. We lost our beautiful African names, branded, sold as property, taking on, taking on the last names of the plantations that we walk on. Them turn them slave names into beautiful extended families of the Virgin Islands. I wonder how them doing, and if them does remember we at their emancipation festival. You know something? I heard that Miss Perrine was just there the other day. Let me call she and see if she could give you an update now. Miss Perrine, Miss Perrine. Where are you calling me from? <laughs> Girl, Miss Perrine, how the children doing? We haven't checked on them in a little while now. How the people? They just still work together and live together so well, doing their farming and fishing, building their homes together, working the land they owned, do they still build and sell the beautiful wooden boats they called the sloops? Girl, I don't even know where to begin. Them give up farming long time. Don't walk the soil no more. And then barely fishing. Them take on a thing called tourism and financial services. Now these industries brought them great wealth but they brought a whole set of other things too. How can I describe this to you? The wealth created an economy where a lot of migration flooded the soil. It was a steady ongoing flood from all over. Girl, the last time I checked, them had over a hundred nationalities represented on those small islands. You ask if they still live together as one? Now let me try to explain this. What them had villages before with 10 or so extended families living well together? Now seven out of every 10 families is from somewhere else. Now you know we were always a hospitable people, but it's hard to tell how our children faring, got to mix up all betwixt and between. I can't tell you how much of the land that we gave our blood for that they still own. You ask if they're making wooden sloops? Y'all have gone out of style. There's a thing called the yachting industry. And these little islands are the sailing capital of the world. But y'all, they don't own them boats anymore. And they don't own that industry. At best, they might have a few who repair them. And if you're lucky, one or two captains who chatter a week or so. And how can I describe this? You know how the families had come to own the keys you talked about? Well, these days, the majority of those keys are privately owned. All Aguana, Mosquito, Norman, Peter, where all families used to make their home. Miss Perrine, I wonder if you know what you're saying. Oh, wait, there's more. I wasn't finished. It ain't rice and, it's rice and peas now. It ain't peas and rice. Even find them. As a matter of fact, you remember 
how Parsons used to come by your home and have their lunch during the work week? Well, now they've got a thing called a restaurant. But guess what? The restaurants so many Italian food, Indian food, Chinese food, not even one with the African food of our ancestors. And when you're looking for all traditional foods like fish and mayonnaise, sauce, cassava, bread, jammy, cake, there's only one or two places you could go and you better know where to find them. What has happened? What has happened? How come them lose connection? Wait till, wait till them, uh, wait, pick, wait, tell me them does remember we at festival though? Do they remember we the ancestors? Mr. Ellick, them don't even know about me paying charges, much less the trial. Them don't know about the freedom fighters that Josiah's been. Not even Uncle Limerick or Uncle Shelley. But how it is them forget about me paying charges? I am the one who gave the testimony that had Alta Hodge hung. Everybody thought it was just Prosper. He killed for picking the mango. They don't even know the majority of the slaves on that plantation. He killed with his sadistic ways. When I finished my testimony, the die was cast. And listen, this had an impact on the entire Caribbean. A white planter was hung for a murder of a slave. Times was changing. And hold on. I don't really talk about the true meaning of the Emancipation Festival anymore. Very few. Most of us take it for a big party, a fete, a walk up. Walk up? What that is? <laughs> Girls, don't go there. I might have to explain to you about body paint. I was just telling you, we are not on their minds. The meaning of freedom is not on their minds. They don't remember everything we went through. They don't even realize or reflect on their progress as our children since them times of enslavement. And we sacrifice everything to give them freedom. What can we do? Wait, all is not lost. I remember how proud we were of Faulkner's boy from Anigada. He and the two others, Fonseca and De Castro, who led that grand match. That's how them get them own legislature, you know. What an achievement. Them had really stand up for themselves. I was, it was so important that 1,500 people supported them and were in the match. As a matter of fact, this year marks the 70 years since that match. Let me see how they remember that. Come, let us gather the rest. Let's find Uncle Limerick and Uncle Shelley. Let us find the freedom fighters at Josiah's Bay. Let's look for Frederick Augustus Pickering, Pope R. Stevens, Theodore Faulkner, Glani Fonseca, Lindy Castro. Lindy De Castro. Let us find H. Laverty Stout, all of them. All the people them heroes. We can remind the children who them fought. Help them find their roots again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.